Hey, John here. So in this video, I want to show you the steps I go through when I want to learn a new scale or arpeggio. But in this case, I'm going to show you this scale, which is basically like a minor pentatonic, but with a major third instead. Uh, this is sometimes called the dominant pentatonic, but there's also another scale called the dominant pentatonic this one so I don't want you to get confused uh, I've heard it as the mixolydian pentatonic I've heard it called uh, the John Hammer scale from the guy who wrote um, the Miami Vice soundtrack and he also played with future legends like uh, John McLaughlin and Al Demiola and so on and he used this a lot he played stuff like that he was a Hebrew player uh, and more contemporary stuff would be Steve Moore's Petrucci, Vinnie Moore, Eric Johnson, the list goes on. It's a very, very cool sounding scale. Uh, and the big reason for that, in my opinion, is because you have a half step in this whole pentatonic thing. So, and, and the half step occurs between here, where we raise the third, the minor third to a major third. So you get a half step between the fourth and the third. And that gives a really good uh, and cool tension. So that's the sort of a little backstory for this particular scale. But even if you know the scale already, uh, you can still apply the framework that I'm going to show you. So first of all, I want to make sure I understand the scale. And for me, understanding a scale means I want to know the formula. Uh, and the formula for this one is one, three, four, five, flat seven, one. And this is not going to be a big theory lesson, but the formula numbers come from comparing it to the major scale. So if you have a normal major scale, the formula for major scale will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and that's sort of set in stone, right? So, but, but if you don't know where the normal seven is, how will you know where the flat seven is? So that's sort of the, the way to think about it. So you can see that the normal major scale as sort of the ruler of music, not as in a king, but as a measuring stick. This is a pentatonic scale, so we're actually missing notes compared to the major scale. But again, the formula for this one will be one, three, four, five, flat seven, and that's it. Uh, and even though it's a pentatonic scale, the shapes are quite different from the, the normal pentatonic scales you, you might have played before, like the major pentatonic or the minor pentatonic. And that's because of this half step. First step, I know now what the, the actual uh, formula for the scale is. And now I want to explore that on a single string at a time. So I'm going to start on the high E string. And when I do this, I want to make sure that I have the root note. So whatever key you're in, I'm in the key of A right now. So I have an A drone ringing in the background. Uh, and I have a playlist with all 12 uh, keys, by the way, if you want to try this out yourself. I'm just going to map out this scale on one string. So <clears throat> the lowest note you can start on without using an open string will be the flat seven at the root, the third, the fourth, the fifth, flat seven again, root, third, fourth, fifth. And then the next step is just to play around with these notes very slowly. There's no need to do anything flashy. It's not about making a, an amazing solo. So no pressure on yourself. You're just basically exploring the scale on a single string. And at this stage, it's a good idea to be really aware of the intervals you're playing. So just take it slow and actually say the interval name out loud. I usually do this with solfege, but I'm not going to get into that here, so just use the numbers. So, 1, 3, 4, 5, flat 7, 1, flat 7, 1, 3, 1, flat 7, 1, 5, 4, 3, and so on. Uh, so you keep doing that. I'm not going to do it now because that's annoying to listen to. Uh, and just play around, like I said. And at first you're probably going to go up. A lot of like from one note to the next, but as you get more comfortable, try doing bigger skips. But as you do that, maybe try uh, challenging yourself by going like, okay, I'm gonna go one, then go to five, and then you have to sort of look for the five. Okay, that's here, and then I go to the flat seven, back to three up to four, three, flat seven, one, maybe up to four up here. 
three one flat seven one five four three one flat seven one and so on uh, and then when you've done that for a while uh, either use a timer so maybe set it for a few minutes uh, and then just go to the next ring once the timer rings or just do it until you feel like yeah I'm getting a bit bored of this now uh, then you can move on to the next ring. Uh, so then you map it out to the next ring. So the lowest available note here would be three, four, five, flat seven, one, three, four, five, flat seven, one. And then you do the same thing. You just improvise, but take it easy and really try to see the interval. So five, four, three, one, flat seven, one, five, four, three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat seven, one, three, Four, three, one. Right, so as you can see, it's, it's nothing soloistic about this new word, perhaps. But it's not, it's not about you going like... and really trying to uh, make a big grand solo out of it. It's just you exploring the scale string by string. So no more, no less. Then you simply repeat that on each uh, string. So you would do this, find the notes on the G string and so on, the D string, A string, and then the low E string. Uh, so spend time on each string. And once you've done that, and, and this is not something I think you should do until you feel like you've mastered it or anything. It, instead, do this first. Maybe you spend, I don't know how much time you want to spend, but maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Then you go to the next step. And the next step would be to uh, get the scale down on two strings at a time, but I will do that in small positions. And for, since this is a pentatonic scale, I'm going to do two notes per string. So I'm going to start here on the root, and the first shape I'm going to get is this one. So again, I want to be aware of what I'm doing. So I have one, three, four, five. Then the next one will start on the third. Three, four, five flat seven and as you can see here this is quite a different shape than what you would get in the minor pentatonic because of the half step again next shape would be from the fourth so four five flat seven one it's very similar to the minor pentatonic and then we have five flat seven one three and then finally we have flat seven one three, four. Whoops. Then we're back where we started. So we have five different shapes. Right, and then the next step from there would be to map it out on all string groups. So now we did E and A, so the next one would be A and D. So the lowest one I can start on here would be, because I'm not using open strings. And now you're going to get exactly the same shape as you did before, because it's the same tuning, right? And the same goes for the next string group as well, D and G string. The only difference here is where, where these shapes are located. Uh, and then we get to the G and B string, and this is where things get a bit, little bit dicey, but it's not that big of a deal. It's still basically the same shapes, it's just that the second string is going to be a half step up. So th this one, for example, still the same as this one, just that we've moved it up a half step on the, on the higher string. Same thing here. And some of these become easier to play because of this, but it's one that's a bit trickier actually, so... This one. Because you need to do this, or just refinger it. But it's not that bad once you get into it. Uh, and then finally we have the high E string, and now this is gonna be... Uh, same same shapes as the, the other four string groups. So basically we, we have, uh, or other three I mean. So we're gonna have one sort of black sheep when it comes to the string groups, which is the G and B string. But like I just explained, it's just a half step up, so no big deal once you understand that. So as you do this, hopefully you notice that 
yes, you know, you have new shapes and all that stuff, but it's it's a limited number, uh, right? So it's it's five different shapes because we have five starting notes, uh, and. One thing that makes this scale easier in a way than the minor pentatonic, for example, is the fact that we have this distinction. All the shapes look different. Where in the minor pentatonic, you have some shapes that look the same. So you really need to understand where your root is then to, to know where you're at in the scale. Uh, this one is, is easier because you have you, you know, the, the different shapes for each of the starting points. So uh, what I would do with this then, uh, I would take two shapes at a time and then just go between them in an improvisatory fashion. So I would just go. And you know, pretty much like that. So it's not, again, nothing, uh, no big grand solo here either. It's just about exploring the notes. Right, and then you take next one. And obviously you shouldn't do it as fast. You just go very slowly initially, so you can really feel in control. Then you go through each pair like that. So you start with the first one, going to the second one, second one to the third, third to the fourth, and so on. And do that on each string group. And you don't need to spend a lot of time either because you're gonna find that once you've done this, it's gonna be the same here. And you know, it's gonna be repeat all over the fretboard. So once you get used to moving between each of these uh, pairs of the shapes, you, you're gonna find that it's not that difficult. And the next step will be to do three strings at a time. So we're gonna go like this. And then we'll just stay in this. Just stay in whatever, sh I go through all the shapes first, but then if I find a shape that feels trickier than the other ones, I would stay in that shape and, and play around with it until I find that it, you know, starts to clear up. So for example, let's say this one was tricky. Just play around with it uh, for a while and then find them all on the next string group. So we, yeah, we're here. And so on. And so now the next string group, we're gonna see the B string rear its ugly head again. So we just need to compensate for that. But you'll find, since you've done the two string uh, shapes first, it's not gonna be that difficult because you're already familiar with the G string and the B string. So you just, you can find them quite easily, even though it's a part of a bigger shape now. Right, so you do the same thing there. And again, if you find a particular shape tricky, stay in that one and just improvise around it. And you know, you don't need to use hybrid pick or anything like that. You can just go. It's just about getting comfortable with that particular fingering. Uh, and then you have the, the highest string set here. And you do the same thing there. If you want, you can also pair these up so you go. And at this point, I generally go from three strings at a time into all six strings, in my case, since I'm only playing six string guitars. So I don't go through four strings and five strings first. You can do that if you want, but I think you'll find that once you've done the three string shapes, it's quite easy to just go straight to the six string shapes. Because you already played all this stuff. But now you can just play around in 
in one position at a time here as well. And if you find a particular one challenging, stay, stay longer in that one. And again, if you do that and you find like, well, the whole position is not necessarily a problem, but this middle string group is. Then you know you have more work to do in the in that particular three string uh, shape. So try to be a bit uh, pragmatic about this. You don't need to spend the exact same amount of time on everything. Instead, you want to find sort of your gray areas or, your, or sort of the blacked out spots for you where you, you can't really find your way. So, but by doing it in this order, so you do single string, you do two strings at a time, and then you do three strings at a time, and then finally the full shapes. Uh, I think it's a, such a logical way of doing it that you, you can, the knowledge is going to build upon itself. So you, you might pick something up from the single string that will help you in the two string examples, and that's going to help you in the three string and so on. So you, you build it up in a very logical fashion, because I found that a lot of the time when we learn a new scale, someone just chucks, uh, you know, <laughs> the full scale patterns on you. Uh, which is also, it can work if, because you need to learn them eventually. But I found doing it this way is quite helpful. And especially when you keep in mind the actual intervals you're playing, the functional intervals. So you can hear what you're doing. Uh, because scales are so much more than just patterns on the guitars. It's about what... what notes you're playing and the effect that's going to have on the listener. And the better you know these notes, the, the, the freer you can be if you want to improvise or compose or whatever. So this is my way of putting together a, a new scale that I haven't worked on before. And also this is not, you know, done in a day necessarily. Uh, I've gotten way faster doing this since I have so much, you know, previous knowledge to build on. But when you first start doing this, this might be a week worth of practice, right? So don't be, don't be discouraged if you feel like it's hard to remember everything. Uh, just make sure you spend enough time in each step before you go to the next one. Uh, but I would also say that if you apply this in your practice schedule and you have 30 minutes to work on things, I would maybe start by doing 10 minutes on the single string and then 10 minutes on the two string things and 10 minutes on the three string uh, boxes as well or shapes and then do that for a few days and then you can basically do less of each and then start adding more of the, the full shapes as well. But like I mentioned in the beginning, you don't need to feel that you have to master the single string or the two string or whatever because it's hard to know when you're ready it's better to move on and then see if like oh shit this was really hard and then you can pull back a bit uh so so you need to be the judge of that when you when you study by yourself right and even if you've started with a teacher because the teacher can't be with you all the time but the whole point is to get comfortable with these scales so you can see them on the entire fretboard in that key you're working on and then obviously you want to repeat this in a few different other keys as well but as frank gambali said once you've done this work in five, six, seven keys, the, the remaining keys kind of just show up by themselves because at that point you've seen these shapes and patterns so much that you can sort of put it together on the fly. So give this a try. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and see you in the next one. Back in the day, I used to have real issues with fast alternate picking when it came to tune off per string. I was fine with three notes per string, but the two notes per string thing was a bit harder to, to crack. So if you struggle with fast alternate picking as well, and you don't know what to practice or for how long, I've created the perfect solution for you in the form of the Pentatonic Picking Power Book. So in this book, you'll find a daily workout that will not only help your pentatonic picking, but will also upgrade your overall alternate picking technique. So it contains basically the same exercises I used myself to develop my picking abilities, as well as numerous students over the years that I've given the same exercise to with great results. So I know these exercises work as long as you put in the work. So it's not a quick solution or quick fix. 
will still take a lot of work but at least you have a very easy to follow routine so if you're up for a big alternate picking upgrade in 2024 i cannot think of a better start it's nine bucks and i think it's very underpriced but i did it that way just so as many people as possible could be helped by this so check that out